Welcome back. I'm talking with Lance Avra about workers' comp. And we all know a little bit about workers' comp, but what does it really mean? Linda, um, beginning with the 20th century, the United States went through an industrial boom and uh, you saw more and more workforce uh, injuries. And beginning in 1910, there was the first workers' compensation law in the United States. And in 1935, Florida itself wrote the first workers' compensation statute. And what it is, essentially, it replaces civil um, liability or civil cases that may be brought against an employer. There was a trade-off. The employer agreed to provide benefits to injured workers. It's a no-fault system, no matter whose fault it is. If someone's hurt in the course and scope of their employment, benefits, medical benefits, and lost wages are provided. When that is provided, there is an immunity to the employer from civil lawsuits by the employee. So the employer is immune from civil cases. And workers' compensation essentially is medical care and lost wages. It does not include mental pain and suffering, um, loss of enjoyment of life, um, all of the other types of damages that you may collect under a civil um, uh, case. And people assume that it does. I think that people think it's, yes, medical and, yes, lost wages, but I think they also assume that if they are injured permanently or for a long time, that that's going to be compensated as well. And you probably handled a lot of cases just like that. I've had uh, many, many catastrophic cases where people have um, morphine pumps or spinal cord stimulators and they are very debilitated um, as to what they were before the accident. They can't go back and do all of the activities that they did at home or during the weekend and it's unfortunate but they are not entitled to recover uh, pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life and the other types of damages that you can as if it's a civil case. So it, it is limited to medical care in lost wages. So you can end up in a wheelchair, for example, and there's that one-time payout and, and that's it. Well, there, it's not a one-time payout. The, the, if there is an accident in the course and scope of the empo uh, employment, the employer and their carrier is obligated to provide medical care for the life to the employee as long as that employee does not let the statute of limitations run on that medical care. And if someone is not able to work and meets the definition of permanently disabled under the statute applicable to their date of accident, the employer and their carrier would also have to provide lost wages for their lifetime or with a new statute through the age of 75 and tell um, me, if they qualify for permanent total disability benefits. And what is the new statute? What is that? Well, there's been various statutory changes throughout the history of the workers' compensation sure. statute in the state of Florida. And the most recent uh, statutory change went into effect October 1 of 2003. And the new statute has a lot of limitations on medical benefits that you're, you're entitled to. Um, it limits the ability to change physicians during the life of the claim. And there is a limitation, a significant limitation on permanent total disability benefits that you may be entitled to. Um, if, you are, if you are unable to return to your former occupation, that does not mean that you are permanently and totally disabled under the statute that's currently in effect. Essentially, you have to demonstrate that you're not able to do a sedentary job um, within a 50 mile ra radius of your home in order to qualify for permanent total disability uh, under the current statute. So if you did a job that required a lot of physical labor, um, working in ironworks, for example, or some sort of construction job, they say, okay, well now you can go do a desk job, so you're... You're not permanently and totally disabled under the statute under that fact scenario. Now, you can look at uh, all of the factors, whether someone's age, their education background, and there's a movement among, among the plaintiffs or claimants lawyers in the state of Florida in demonstrating, and some of the judges have agreed that if you can demonstrate that because of socioeconomic factors like age, edu lack of education, um, they have done a heavy manual job for 30 years. And experience, yeah. Experience. You look at all of those other factors and a vocational consultant can offer an opinion that when you look at everything as a whole, they can't go back to doing their former occupation and they can't go back to any other occupation as well because you have considered all of that evidence. Well, that's one bright spot in this, but it sounds like um, the legal system is against you when when you have to make a claim and, and they've set medical limits, is that what you're saying? There's only X amount of dollars? There, there's, there's no medical limits, but you can, you can only change uh, one do a doctor one time during the life of the claim. For any reason? I mean, if it turns out that 
you just don't get along with that doctor, you can't communicate with he or she? That's correct. They, they permit you one change. Um, prior to 2003, there was not a limitation on the number of times that you can change physicians. So if you had various specialties, you could change this specialty and this specialty, but under the current statute, you get one change during the life of the claim. Thank you, Lance. I appreciate this information.